I am the roll of the cinnamon. <laughs> no. No, just no. <laughs> and you are listening to the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's most bleak endings. You weren't feeling it? I guess I got that. No. I, I had that coming. No. You had that, yeah. Yep. I'm holding that grudge from last week. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in this week. Uh, this is, of course, Smoking Aces 2006. Uh, this is also the Silver Linings Playlist podcast. If this is your first time listening, this is an interesting one that you've turned into. Uh, to, you've tuned into this week. Turned into? Turned into. Turned it in. We are what we watch. Uh, so, again, Smoking Aces. Uh, Mally, what's your relationship like with this movie? Uh, I'm going to nickname this chicken I'm eating Smoking Aces because I got a little crazy with the cayenne pepper on it. It is hot as shit. Okay. This movie is a white knuckle fucking thrill ride. Um, I think I saw this in theaters, actually. Off the recommendation of a good friend. I did not. Man, holy shit. Yeah, it's... Holy shit. The first time I saw it, I I remember thinking, okay, I missed a lot of stuff here, but what the fuck just happened? (laughs) Yeah. It goes by quick, man. Really quick. Um, I think I saw this probably, like, I can't pinpoint a year, but I would say it's probably around 2010, 2011, just because it was after it came out <clears throat> when I was on my like binge of watching, trying to watch every movie ever. <laughs> and this was definitely one of them. And it was a fun one. I didn't, I was not familiar with a lot of the people in this movie. Well, I, I wasn't really familiar with Jeremy Piven. I'd only seen Ryan Reynolds and maybe I think Waiting mm. and Just Friends. Maybe Just Friends, yeah. Uh, I knew Colin was a rapper, but I think, this, well, this is his first movie, so I wasn't really yeah. too familiar with him. And, of course, I knew Ray Liotta, and that's about it. Oh, I guess I, Ben Affleck, yeah, but that's about it. Jason Bateman? I didn't really know Jason Bateman at oh. the time. Shit. Yeah. Uh, well, at least not by name. I probably had seen him, but that's, yeah. I mean, he had some things in there. there. But, uh, yeah, so that's this is Smoking Aces. Uh, again, the year's 2006. Director Smoking Joe Carnahan. Fuck. Yeah. And we've already mentioned a bunch of people here, but let's talk about the cast starring Ryan Reynolds. Uh, everybody. Ray Liotta, yeah. Joseph Ruskin, Alec Rocco, Jeremy Piven, Ben Affleck, Peter Bird, Common, Andy Garcia. The list doesn't stop. It just keeps going. Wait, who's Joseph Ruskin? No idea. All right. <laughs> um, it There's a lot of, oh, that guy. Yeah. A lot of the, oh, the guy, that guy. Uh, yeah, some other people we haven't mentioned, Jason Bateman, uh, Alicia Keys, Chris Pine. First time I had been introduced to Chris Pine. Yeah, first time I ever saw Chris Pine in a movie. Mm-hmm. Why, and then didn't know who he was, saw, and then, you know, saw, like, Star Trek and everything, and then was looking at his filmography. I was like, holy shit, he's one of the Tremor Brothers? Crazy as shit. Well, and the big Tremor Brother, what's his name? He's in Lost as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this movie is just literally... The cast of Lost. You have the dude. What's his name? He played the mayor in Dark Knight. He played uh, Richard on he played Lost. Richard in there, yeah. Um, looks fuck. like he looks like he's always rocking guy liner. That might be Joseph Ruskin. No, be, no, 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 no. That's not his. That's not his name. I. We all know that guy. Yeah, it's oh but, shit, uh, it's that guy. The yeah, guy that looks like he has eyeliner on, but doesn't. The dude that plays the biggest trimmer brother, Kevin Durant. That's his name. Is the big guy? Yeah, or Durand. Kevin that's, that's Durand. A basketball player. <laughs> um, Fuck, you're right. <laughs> smoking Aces. Let's look it up, because I do want to know that guy's name. Oh, Alec Rocco is uh, Serna, who's one of the uh, the mobsters, I think. What? Joseph Ruskin plays Primo Sparazza. Oh. Yeah. Died in 2013, actually. Um, Fuck, what Who am I name? thinking of, then? Mm. Nestor Carbonell. That's his name, yeah. Kevin Durand. Kevin Durand. Durand. Uh, no. Tommy Flanagan, mm-hmm. who uh, apparently is on that Sons of Anarchy show that I've never watched. Yeah, um, he's, he's actually one of the better characters on that show. Joel Edgerton, mm-hmm. who is literally just in everything. Yeah. Uh, Matthew Fox, other people. Mm-hmm. A lot of people in this movie. Uh, Cookie from Empire, I can't remember her name. Taraj P. Henderson. Yeah, she's in here. There's a lot of people. Peter um, Berg. Mentioned Peter Burry. Budget oh. of thirty five million. Yeah. Okay. Budget thirty five million. Gross worldwide fifty seven million. And this is wrong, but twenty nine percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Certifi- what the fuck? Yeah, certified rotten. That's no. wrong. That's wrong. No. 
That's that's the critics, obviously. I'm no, gonna look I, real quick, dude. I think you're dyslexic. That's a ninety-two percent. <laughs> Let me go look because I'm. I want to see what the what the uh, what the audience score is on that because that's wrong. That's some bullshit. You you can have an opinion about a movie, but you're wrong in in that one. Yeah, critics, uh, clearly, this is a really fucking. I mean, it's a fun movie. I have fun watching this and, movie, and it's rewatchable as shit. Sixty-two percent audience score, a lot better. Now add those two scores together, and that's what the score really is. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> infinitely quotable, dude. So oh many my good God. quotes in this movie, uh, and not only that, but we're going to get there. But the transitions and how they go oh from scene, it's like if you're a fan of Archer, how they connect wordplay from scene to scene, and one character saying one thing meaning one thing, and then like, another character saying the exact same thing meaning something else. So what this, this movie is littered with that, and it's fucking perfect. Like the Plus, editing is top notch here. Andy Garcia talks a lot, mm-hmm. which is always a good thing. It makes me feel like his character in Ocean's Eleven. Yeah, pretty much the same character. Um, Only not. <laughs> yeah, at all. Let's actually. listen to let's listen to the trailer, and you will get an idea of exactly pretty straightforward what the plot is of this movie. Hey, Jack. Great. Hey, good. Bro, Super. Good come on you. in. Good to see hey, you. Yo, Pete. Hello, referee. Come yeah. on in. Good, good. Great. Come on. What's the uh, nerd? Great. Come on in. Sorry about that. Hey, Hollis. Referee. Hello, Hollis. Come on in. Let's get to the business at hand. This wanted felon here, buddy Israel. Little Rick Springfield, I guess. His posse. You know, they're all strapped. Or packing heat, whatever the phrase is. I don't strapped. know what you guys call it. Strapped down. Yeah. Hey, man. That's not yours. Put the rabbit down. Buddy Israel. No former witness against the mob has been as crucial as Buddy Aces Israel. He's a strung out, washed up, has been jerk, snitch, seven layer loser. What are you trying to say? What's the rate? One million bucks. Million dollar hit fee would draw some huge flies. He's not only essential to our case, he is our case. They're gonna pour boxes of bullets in Israel. They must not succeed. When do we get consigned? If an attempt is made on his life, it'll be made by those of the strictest professional caliber. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna get to Israel before they do. We gotta keep him in that penthouse. Guys, we'll go mega time. You're steering hard, player. I'm going down. <laughs> I bet you are. What do you think of this trailer? That trailer is fucking perfect. Really? Okay, <laughs> for the movie, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is batshit crazy. Yeah, just like the movie is, but like in a good way. I feel like, like that trailer did a lot of cocaine, and I was like, okay, I'm ready to be seen by people. I feel like that's what the trailer is going for, but to me, it looks like it's edited for like a college freshman school assignment. Like, it's got yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is exactly what this movie calls for. I guess. Maybe you're right. Uh, I just, I don't know. Wasn't too big a fan of the the trailer, but the movie is what we're here to talk about. Yes, so. it is. Do you want to get into it? Fuck yeah. I feel like this movie is very Guy Ritchie-esque. And I say that having only seen a handful of Guy Ritchie movies, but I know <laughs> the tone okay. when I see it. I know the flavor. I know the feel, the style. And this movie just oozes... Americana Guy Ritchie-ness. You know what I mean? It's Is super it cool. Is Guy Ritchie British? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's Americana. It's like it's the American version. Like it, oh, it's got wait, this cool so you're factor. Joe Carnahan's the American Guy Ritchie? I uh, kind of. I guess. Wait, hang on. So, Guy Ritchie, if he did more cocaine. Yeah, no, that holds up. Yeah, it's just, it's got this cool oozing factor. It's fast-paced. It's in your face. It's, like you said, infinitely quotable. 
Oh, dude, it's, this movie does not let up. It's just a cool movie. Like, everyone talks so fast in this movie, and if you're not paying attention, you are going to miss vital plot points. And uh, we already mentioned it, but the cast alone makes this movie just fucking awesome. Oh, yeah. And there's so many little nuances in this movie that have no real purpose in terms of the plot. It just makes his character more three-dimensional, makes this universe feel way cooler. Like, oh, this movie has some great little character moments. Like, uh, just the whole conversation, which is our first scene, actually, with Ryan Reynolds and Ray Liotta, who are Agent Messner and Carruthers, respectfully. Uh, just They're in this van. They're staking out uh, a, a mafioso's house, Primo Sparazza. They're staking out his residence. Uh, they're having a conversation about your, how urine is good for your skin, as yeah. Ray Liotta says his grandma told him. And, again, this conversation has no oh, wait, bearing on the piss plot. piss on your face? Yeah. It has, hey, watch it. Has no bearing on the plot, but it's just a little nuanced thing that's just happening. It's, it's kind of yeah. like a Tarantino thing. Like Things will happen that have <laughs> no bearing on anything. It just yeah. makes the characters more well-rounded, makes the universe cooler. But uh, they've been there for apparently 16 hours outside this house, just staking them, oh, staking them out. That's horrible. Yeah. Uh, another little nuance thing here. Messner apparently is really sweaty, and, and Carruthers ask him, "You know, why? Are, why are you? Are you nervous?" And Messner's like, "Why?" And he's like, "We, what kind of deodorant do you use?" And Ron Reynolds looks down and sees he's sweating. And he's like, "I don't use deodorant." And he gives you Alzheimer's, <laughs> which I don't know. I don't know. That could I, be I, science. It could be not. That's but, a Snopes easily look upable kind of thing. But right? I'm gonna keep wearing deodorant. Yeah, that's I'm still, stinky. Still gonna wear deodorant. Um. Yeah, but they're just they're sitting there just talking about the you know the the case and Primo Sparazza and everything, and then uh, a phone call comes in and they they tap the phone. Uh, one of uh, Sparazza's head men is having a conversation. And they're talking about how they're gonna uh, double cross Buddy Israel, played by Jeremy Piven. Uh, Buddy Israel, as we come to know, is well, no, they're double crossing Sparazza. Sparazza by giving by putting a hit out on Buddy Israel, which is like. Sparazza's protege, pretty much. Of course, if you haven't seen this movie, what the fuck are you even doing here? Go watch it. But literally, the whole plot of the movie gets set in place by this dude misunderstanding the conversation he overheard. Yeah. Because what he thinks he is hearing is that Sparazza is putting a hit out on Buddy Israel. Mm -hmm. What's actually happening is he's... Well, kind of still putting a hit out on him, but he's literally trying to capture him yep. to take his heart for a heart transplant. Yeah, there's the wordplay that there's a million dollar hit out on Buddy Israel because Sparazza wants his heart. But and Sparazza is actually paying a million dollars to this Swedish doctor to that the, give him a heart transplant. That Mesner Carruthers thinks is a hitman. They mentioned, oh yeah, they're bringing in this Swede. He's a professional. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Turned, uh, we get this kind of backstory about uh, a character, this Swede, uh, who's known for his torture methods. No, no, that's no, we don't know anything about the Swede. Right. Well, th this is the under what they're understanding is the Swede. Like, there's no. That's on my list. You have a right complete here. misunderstanding of this entire. No, sequence. I understand what's going on, but the, the way Swede, they know nothing about the Swede. Right, but they're mentioning who this person they think is. No, the no, Swede. no. Okay, no, no. correct Completely me. Completely different me character. Correct me then, because okay. I am wrong. So, this guy, this other mob guy is going to double cross Sparaza and get to Buddy Israel before he can, so we he can hold him. Mention, well, I guess we can get to it. Keep going, I'm sorry. So, from there, we cut to Andy Garcia, mm -hmm. who's the FBI boss, pretty Direct, much. The director, yeah. Giving a rundown of what's happening. He's pretty much like, word's gotten out about this million dollar hit, so... We need to get to Buddy Israel before anyone else can because he's a key informant in our case against Sparaza. Yeah. So then what they do is run through a list of all these hitmen who they think are going to go after them. Right. And one of them happens to be who they think is a Swede. No. Right? That's what I understood no, no, about no. this movie. No, no, no. Okay, keep, keep going. The Swede is a complete mystery. No one knows a goddamn thing about the okay, Swede. Okay, so... The li they run through this list of hitmen who they think are, like, because they've learned that all these different hitmen are going for this right. bounty. Right, And then they just run through this list of people who they think they're going to go after them. 
including Richard from Lost, who's like a fucking psychopath. Yeah. Like crazy torturer. Known for his torture methods. Yeah. Chewed off his fingertips in prison so he couldn't be ID'd. Down to the bone. They Down said. to the bone. Which is insane. Uh, I also should mention real quick, because I looked it up. Apparently, they claim that antiperspiration, uh, antiperspirants can lead to breast cancer has proven false. I, don't see any, I couldn't find anything about Alzheimer's. Interesting. So there you go. Um, we oh. get introduced because all this is happening exposition wise is going like I said like kind of like that Archer thing where we're going from one set of characters to another set of characters and they're talking about the same thing and it's just transitioning into showing you that everybody's talking about Buddy yeah. Israel. Oh yeah, and they kind of. Oh, sorry. Keep going. Yeah, I, I keep going. Uh, we got we introduced to these three bell bondsmen: Ben Affleck, Peter Berg, and Martin Henderson. Uh, who I'm just gonna call them by their real names because I don't know yeah, the characters. That's fine. Names. Uh, they're playing pool in this pool hall, and they're kind of going over the same thing, exposition. Okay, yeah, let me tell you about Buddy Ace's Israel. And we get this montage of, of Jeremy awesomeness. Piven. Yeah. Jeremy Piven is the fucking man. He is awesome. But he is, <coughs> basically, he was a, a Las Vegas entertainer. He won, like, Entertainer of the Year, like, five yeah. years in a row. Uh, and he started getting connections, as they say, doing the Sinatra thing yeah. with mafiosos and everything. Gets introduced to Sparazza. And starts going out on these like robbery missions and everything. Basically, he's a wannabe gangster yeah. and just doesn't know what he's doing. But he's getting a shit ton of money, making a shit like a huge name for himself. Uh, but the FBI basically pulling him in is going to use him as an informant to bring down Sparazza and his organization. Uh, again, Andy Garcia, FBI, the FBI deputy director, starts telling us telling the story about uh, a past. FBI agent that went in undercover uh, to try and bring down Sprott. It's a name Freeman Heller, who was a double op. Uh, he underwent, uh, we get this flashback of him describing to the FBI board that he's going to go undercover. He's going to get a shit ton of plastic surgery. Yeah, pretty much go full on, like, deep undercover. Yeah, in pretty much change his entire appearance, like 13 to 20 something, like, elective surgeries to change how he's going to look. How he's going to speak, what his name is, everything. And uh, the FBI believes that, that Prima Sparazza actually shot him down in an alley after finding out. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, uh, because of that, they already have Sparazza on a bunch of charges and everything. And they, they're they going to use Buddy to bring him down to his testimony, which is going to grant him immunity, mm -hmm. pretty much. Um, all Buddy has to do is basically play along and survive long enough. At, at his penthouse in this casino hotel in Lake Tahoe, uh, long enough to 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 basically give his testimony. Uh, the Sprout says man that was gonna roll like <coughs> double cross Israel pretty much mentioned that there's these two hit women that he wants to hire. So we get introduced to those characters. That's Alicia Keys and Cookie. I'm just gonna call her Cookie. Tarash P. Anderson, but yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, basically having a conversation with I guess who is their Finder, their, their handler, yeah, uh, and she's given some more exposition. Pretty much the same thing about Buddy Israel that they want his heart, uh, that Sprouts wants his heart, uh, and they say, yeah, there's a million dollar bounty, uh, and she's like, you know, a price tag that big is going to draw all sorts of people around, and then we get introduced to all the hitmen, uh, Pas Pascal Acosta, Pascal Acosta, El also known as El Estrago, and that's the dude Richard from Lost chewed off his fingerprints, mm -hmm. legendary torturer. And yep. then the motherfucking Trimmer brothers. Oh man, we get Chris kick Pine, out Kevin the Durant fucking Motorhead, Roy Sterling. Get oh kick god, on that the fucking Motorhead. motorhead. We get introduced. Yeah, the Trimmer brothers are neo Nazis that are fucking crazy. We'll go through twenty nine people just to kill one. Which we as get to Ben see, Affleck so eloquently puts it, they will go fucking megaton. Yeah, really quickly we get a flashback of them going through a restaurant, killing everyone just to get to this one guy. Uh, one of the brothers is dragging another one out by yeah, the one collar. Gets, one gets shot. shot in the spine and passes out. Chris Pine one Pine gets blinded <laughs> on like on his, the dude's shoulder, and they're in the streets just gunning this dude down. Yeah, I, out of all the hitmen, the Tremor brothers by far my favorite. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, then Laszlo Soot, played by Tommy Flan uh, Flanagan, who's like a fucking just master of disguise, mm -hmm. like can just fucking like. Uh, if anyone watches Game of Thrones, he's like a faceless man, mm. which you don't. So this is like a Mission Impossible scenario. Like people are just constantly <laughs> pulling off masks. Yeah, uh, kind of much. Um, 
Yeah, so we get a little like introduction to all these characters, very Guy Ritchie esque. Yeah, so you have all, so you have not only Mesner and Carruthers and the FBI going after Buddy Israel. You got you have Ben Affleck and his crew, the who are Bill Bondsman. Then you have all these different hitmen, hitmen, and hit women, and then apparently the mysterious Swede. Swede, yeah. But we find out the bond expires oh, in hit, eighteen hit, hours. Hit people, sorry. Hit people. There you go. Yeah, the bond expires in 18 hours. While well, everyone thinks that, uh, well, while the FBI thinks everyone thinks that Buddy Israel is in Las Vegas, he's actually in Lake Tahoe, and everyone already knows that. So everyone's, all these hit people and Carruthers and Messner are headed to Lake Tahoe, where we get introduced to Israel's suite. Uh, it's just littered with hookers and people that are passed out. And Buddy's just kind of looking around. He's waiting for his lawyer, Mecklen, to call because Mecklen is actually dealing directly with the FBI. <laughs> and we get this super interesting take on Jeremy Piven because he's looking around. He kind of steps away from his suite and he looks up to this non-accented light source. It's almost like a spotlight shine down on yeah. from above. He looks up to it and he's like, are you fucking kidding me? And puts on some sunglasses and just says, fuck you to no one listening. <laughs> <laughs> and then just, or anyone listening. And then just walks around the room throwing Starts money throwing on hookers. Cards. No, it's it's playing cards. Oh, that's yeah, right. Yeah, he's right. tossing playing cards at sleeping hookers, you know, saying like, fuck you, get out, whatever. Uh, and uh, <laughs> we get introduced to Hugo, who is Joe Edgerton, uh, Israel's assistant or mm-hmm. something, I guess, who is this Eastern European dude with the worst fucking haircut. Oh, my God. In a straight up track suit. And I'm actually going to play the audio here because oh, we have to. Oh, please, God, do. This is, no impression can do it justice. This is my favorite scene of the movie. But oh, yeah. Listen to the cinnamon roll scene. Do me a favor, will you? Will you tell me what that is? Oh, what? Look at the collar on that coat. What does that look like? That stain. Uh, I don't know. Cinnamon roll. The cinnamon the roll. The cinnamon, the, the roll of the cinnamon. That looks like a uh, jizz. Yeah. Eastern European jizz. That looks like some fuckhead shot his load on a $12,000 calfskin jacket. The twist is it's my $12,000 calfskin jacket. So you got the semen, okay? You've got the human ejaculate that's been allowed to soak in for like seven hours, all right? Work its way into the fabric fucking fibers. You like I send out. To what? Incinerate? Hugo. There isn't a fucking laundry detergent or dry cleaning product known to man that will get that clean. Some shit, suffice it to say, just don't wash out. Do you want me an apology? Only if you really, truly mean it. I worry, sorry. Are you a colossal fucking idiot? I am, yeah. Get the phone. It's probably Mecklen. Get Vitoli up here and start cleaning, all right? And please, for me, will you do one thing? Get out of my fucking sight. <laughs> fucking incredible. This is my favorite scene. Fucking incredible. God, man, yeah, all the way down to the editing, where I love where he throws the car. He's like, what, do you, what is that? And he's like, and you hear Hugo go, what? And just closes down yeah. to just, just enough for you to see the jizz. Oh, the, the, the roll of the cinnamon. <laughs> Looks if like you, jizz. If you want, Eastern I'll send European it European jizz. I love that. <laughs> to, to what? To what? Incinerate? <laughs> Absolutely great fucking retort, dude. I feel like Jeremy Piven is one of the best improv actors. Oh my god, gets no credit for it. But well, it's funny like you say that. Apparently, awesome. that scene at the beginning, like the your grandma pissed in your face, is all improvised. Is all improv. That's insane. But yeah, this I feel like there was some heavy improv in this movie. Absolutely. Um. Yeah. Then they kick all the hookers out, and we get a few of my other favorite lines of where. The one of the one of Buddy's other guys, Beanie. Um, Beanie, the bodyguard, just looks at one of the hookers like, "Damn girl, I didn't realize how fucked up I was, so I just saw your ass. You went from Beyonce to Bigfoot in less than six hours." <laughs> he's kicking all the hookers out, and he's like, "Come on, y'all are on sundown. You need to be on stopwatch." I say <laughs> that lot. Li- the amount of times I say that sundial stopwatch line, mm-hmm. like a day, is insane. 
We also cut back to uh, Alicia Keys and Cookie as they're talking to one of Sprouts' men, one of the guys leading the double cross, and he's like, all right, so what's your plan to get Israel? And we just hear Cookie go, pussy. <laughs> and what? I love the way they do that because as how I watched this with Halsey the other night, and as he pointed out, as soon as she says pussy, the camera kind of switches shoulders mm-hmm. and goes around because the character's almost like, what? Yeah. And he's like, what? And he goes, pussy. <laughs> Basically, Buddy Israel loves pussy. Pushy? <coughs> yeah, no, pushy? Pussy. Yeah, pussy. pussy. <laughs> Does that little humping motion? Yeah. Uh, so Alicia Keys and Cookie's plan is that Alicia Keys is going to dress up as one of the hookers that goes up to Buddy Israel's suite and will clock him out while uh, Cookie watches from across the street in another hotel with a 50 cal fucking sniper rifle in case anything goes down. So that's their plan. Uh, and I guess they're kind of like the direct people in charge of getting Israel, pretty much. Yeah. While the other ones are just out in front of the bounty. Um, we get introduced to Jason Bateman's character and his herpes. Holy shit. Uh, as Ben Affleck. Jason Bateman looking rough. As Ben Affleck and his crew meet him in a hotel room. And I guess they're, he's kind of like, uh, not a bounty hunter. He's kind of like the bell bondsman in charge kind of thing. Like giving out the. He's. What would you call him? He's a lawyer at the law firm that put the the ones that are prosecuting Buddy. Oh, I guess I he hires them pretty much to... Yeah, something like that. Oh, this movie's confusing. Yeah. <laughs> so Jason Bateman's pretty much given the lowdown on Israel and everything. So telling him about all the hitmen that are coming after him. Pretty mm-hmm. much the same thing we've been introduced to. And I gotta say, <laughs> poor Elmore uh, gets like shafted this whole scene. Like, just p- out this of the loop. This whole fucking movie? But... I gotta say, our clue for last week could have been Bones that changed it and put the padlock on it, because <laughs> Jason Bateman tries to give this weird, awkward, cool guy handshake, and it does not look good. Something I came up with, I'm working on it. <laughs> yeah, and then there's just a rabbit head on the <laughs> Yeah, on the there's counter. a lot of weird shit in this scene. We also get introduced... We get with, another one of my favorite quotes right there. What's up? When Jason Bateman gets pissed that he's they're touching his things, he just grabs it. That's not yours, get your dick beaters off of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we cut back to Buddy's suite, we get introduced to Ivy, who is com- uh, Common, who is Buddy Israel's second in command. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's pretty much helping uh, Beanie get all the hookers out. Uh, and I gotta say, dude, the transitions in this movie, like... Uh, fucking awesome. we go uh, back before we cut back to here we're we're back in the the Jason Bateman hotel room and he mentions to uh to Ben Affleck something about $50,000 and you hear buddy Israel go $50,000 and we come yep. back to the suite and he's like I'm not paying $50,000 for this shitbag suite yep and it's exactly what I'm talking about these transitions where dialogue just, just overlaps perfectly perfect <laughs> um then we get introduced to um we go back to Mesner and uh, uh, Carruthers, Carruthers as they're at a bar discussing about Sparazza and like all the surgeries he's had and everything. Uh, he even mentions I have all the charges that the FBI has him for. They even have a paternity case to round out things yeah. like. Um, but their plan is like you know how could, we can't just walk up into the hotel and and get Buddy Israel and Carruthers mentions you, you just look you just gotta flash the letters FBI and everyone does exactly what you gotta tell them to. Cut, Cut to, to Acosta posing as an FBI agent. Flashing his badge. Flashing his badge saying FBI to a pimple-faced... I know this guy is an actor, and I cannot remember his name because he's in every, He's in a bunch of stuff. You. But uh, he's at the hotel, but he is really is posing as an FBI agent saying, look, I need to go. I need to talk to your head of security. Um, then we get possibly... Another qual- a candidate for best scene in the movie, the Lake Tahoe scene. Oh, yes. So Ben Affleck, so <clears throat> ben Affleck Peter Berg, and Martin Henderson are discussing their plan. They're basically going to dress up as uh, hotel security. They got these maroon suits, and they're going to just walk in, get their badges and everything. And as they're discussing their plan, they're outside in this parking lot. We hear straight up death metal playing as a like a... Cadillac or something like what would you what, what, what kind of uh, I don't like know. some kind of old school sedan something awesome uh, drives by uh, we hear it off screen back up in reverse and just as Ben Affleck and crew are looking on like what the fuck are these guys doing just gets gunned down immediately <laughs> like that's it it's kind of like Brad Pitt and Burn After Reading like you think this kid, he's Ben Affleck he's he's gonna last to the end nope he's killed immediately in this scene. And yeah, the Trevor brothers, we get introduced to him for a second time, where one of them draws a Hitler mustache on himself, just in extreme close-up. For no reason. Uh, <laughs> it's in the trailer as well, but 
We also get introduced to Chris Pine as the Tremor, one of the Tremor brothers as he goes over to Ben Affleck's body and basically is having a conversation with himself with one of the characters being Ben Affleck uh, saying, look, I forgive you for killing me. Mm-hmm. Super, again, this scene has nothing to do with anything. It just shows how crazy these people are. Hope to you up there someday. <laughs> He's like, I forgive you, darling. <laughs> <coughs> And while this is happening, the other two Tremor brothers are grab acid for some reason, like out of nowhere. Like yeah, one they of, just start fighting. One of them's peeing, and the other one just looks at him, and they lock eyes and immediately just start fighting. Um, if we can go back to a second to the <coughs> pimply casino employee. What's that? The pimply casino employee. Yeah. The actor you're looking for, his name is Scott Halberstadt. And he's been in a lot of stuff. Has he, though? Well, at least he's got a very recognizable face. He has been in a bunch of Nickelodeon shows. He was in Drake and Josh. Yeah. In 17 episodes of it. Other than that... I feel like I've seen him everywhere. Um, Maybe I'm thinking like he looks kind of like... What's that guy's name from 30 Rock? Jack Breyer or whatever? uh, I feel like they kind of look alike a little bit. He's also credited in Smoke and Aces as Pimply Casino employee. Yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, anyways, uh, Chris Pine finds uh, some paperwork on Ben Affleck that says they're both going after Buddy Israel. They notice the hotel suit, uh, the hotel suits, and they're like, all right, well, this is our plan now. So we cut to Alicia Keys and uh, Cookie as they're checking into the hotel as Buddy Israel's hookers are getting kicked out. And apparently some new ones are coming in soon. And we get this weird... Damn, you brought the 50 out? Not a not a feminist rant, just a weird. I don't know what you would call this, but this Cookie's, movie's version of a feminist. I rant? guess Cookie's like talking to this older white casino lady who's at the front desk and who's all smiles. She's like, "That doesn't look." Let me ask you a question. That doesn't piss you off seeing that you know hookers like that, like men just want us because we're a piece of meat. And Alicia Keys is trying to quiet her. She's like, no, she's asleep. I'm trying to wake this bitch up. Which I use that line constantly in my day to day. (laughs) Just, again, just weird. But we also do get a little bit of some insight on these characters because the hotel woman asks if they want two beds. And Alicia Keys says no. Uh, And Cookie kind (coughs) of warms up to her in a flirtatious way. But it turns out Cookie's not even staying in this hotel. Um, Anyway, we cut to... uh, this suit who's basically getting ready to make a mold of someone. And he's also listening to playback to a, I'm assuming Hugo's voice to try and imitate him. I couldn't. T- well, oh, no, this is before Vitoli. That. He's which is one of the other, one of other buddies, other men. Yeah. How can I be of assistance? Yeah. Hugo goes down to try and get Vitoli to come back upstairs, but who has already killed Vitoli also kills Hugo, makes a mold of his face and disguises himself as Hugo, but again, it's just Joel Edgerton. Um, we get a phone call from from Mecklen finally calling Buddy Israel. He says, "Look, the FBI is only gonna you know go along with this immunity thing if you agree to give up all of your guys, Ivy, uh, Beanie. Wait, wait, Beanie. They don't really everybody. say they don't really say everybody. His name, but, yeah, everybody. Hugo, but told everyone." And he agrees to. At first, he puts up a fight, but he's like, okay, fine. And he agrees to roll on him. But what he doesn't know is that Ivy is listening in on the conversation. Cut to Acosta, who is having having a conversation with the head of security with the mullet, a.k.a. Matthew Fox, also from Lost, uh, about the hotel. And he kills him Assassin's Creed style, this kind of blade thing through... I, I guess he kills him in some kind of, uh, like, his liver or something. Something that doesn't seem very painful because he's basically like, he's talking it through his death. He's, he lays him down on the floor. He's like, Shh, you know, it's going to be okay. You're going to go into shock. You're going to bleed out. Uh, it won't be painful or something like that. And he like tells him, he's like, don't let my face be the last thing you see before you die because heaven might hold it against you. Super badass Damn. line, dude. So badass. But we get a quick cut. Like, I'm sorry. If I ever kill someone. I'm dropping that line. <laughs> Put that on the epitaph, dude. That's a fucking dark ass line. Cut to Lake Tahoe. Turns out Elmore is still alive, uh, but he is missing a bunch of fingers. Uh, I guess the Trimmer brothers threw Ben Affleck, Peter Berg, and his body into Lake Tahoe after they were done with him. Uh, 
but yeah, that we get like a quick glance of him jumping out of the lake, freezing cold, shaking in shock, probably bleeding out. Uh, yeah. We cut to Alicia Keys getting ready in her hooker outfit. And I got to say, I know she's trying to dress as a hooker, but goddamn, I fell in love at least four different times in this scene. But uh, she makes a comment that she doesn't want to kill any women. Uh, she doesn't care about men dying in this in this shootout between her and Israel and anybody that gets in their way, but she doesn't want to kill any women. Across the, ho- across the, the hotel parking lot, across the street, into the other hotel, we find out Cookie is set up in a room with her 50 cal sniper rifle looking right into her window. She's able to see pretty much every window of the hotel on that side of the street. Like, damn. That's, it's a big fucking gun. 50s are absolutely stupid, Like, unless you're planning on killing a building. <laughs> I forgot what she even said. She says, you brought the 50? What, what did she say? I, I can't remember the line, but she basically said something similar to damn, that. Damn, you like, got the 50 out? You're trying to kill a building? Like, kind of that kind of thing. Um, which is also a line from Archer. I just had to throw that in. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Andy Garcia... Back at the FBI headquarters, gets delivered a secret folder. Uh, but dun, dun, dun. yeah, dun, dun, he looks dun, dun. through it, and he's like, "Ties only." It pretty much gives Mecklen a dirty look. No, 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 it's not a dirty look. It's like a, I'm murdering you with my stare. Pretty much look. blacked out eyes, kind of look. Like and just like I don't know. It's it. It's more so the cinematography. Like the way they frame the shot, but like just like his eyes, like he like kind of looks at him and like lowers his head, and his eyes just disappear. <laughs> uh, but he decides he's he mentions to his assistant he's not gonna tell, he's not gonna inform Carruthers or Mesner what he just found. So it's a big mystery. A uh, suit entering uh, enters uh, the hotel the hotel suite posing as Hugo, uh, and Ivy finds Buddy strung out in the bathroom who is just doing a shit ton of coke. Uh, Buddy's even got two different colored eyes because he's putting one contact in and doing yeah. this weird thing with his hands over his eyes. Drops a tear, actually. <laughs> and uh, Ivy asks Buddy about loyalty. He says, you know, next to a dog, my loyalty, my kind of shit you can't buy or something mm-hmm. like that. He's like, the only thing other more loyal than me is a dog, probably. Uh, cut to Carruthers, who is uh, headed up to the penthouse suite. He enters the hotel and he's going to go up the elevator and uh, he's like, oh, uh, he finds basically a hotel, a guy on the floor, one of the security guys. And he's like, can you take me up to the suite? Turns out it's Acosta posing as hotel security. Uh, the pimply faced casino kid notices him and kind of gives him a weird look. But yeah, Acosta and Carruthers get on the elevator and they start heading up to the hotel suite. Cut to a ridiculous fucking scene. Uh, Elmore it's so good. R- apparently has crawled his way onto a house kind of out in the woods from the lake. He rings the doorbell and this white kid in glasses is probably like 12, 13 and full <coughs> karate garb answers the door and is just like, what up G? I think that's the first thing he says to him. And this dude is on the floor, missing fingers, soaking wet, probably bleeding out. Shaking and just like I need help, and this kid is like, "What? What? Speak up!" <laughs> Pretty much, he's like, "Are you eyeballing me?" Just like has no regard for for this emergency situation at all. Uh, we cut back to suit posing as Hugo in the hotel the hotel suite. He kills Beanie, and it's pretty great because Beanie's like got his back to him, cleaning up some glass, and he's like, "Come on down here, Hugo. I gotta clean up. Uh, I need you to help me clean up." <laughs> He's trying to get him to help him clean up and also talk about how he shouldn't have fucked a hooker. Mm-hmm. He's like, your dick is disintegrating as we yeah. speak. Um, but he gets shot in the back. and It's pretty funny because he like turns around. He looks at Hugo. and He's like, oh, hell no, you didn't do that. Yep. <laughs> and yep, Hugo blasts him away. But he's got a silencer on so no one can hear it. And the, he hears Buddy and Ivy in the bathroom. Uh, Ivy confronts Buddy about turning him in, turning him, uh, turning on him. And we get this interesting split diopter shot of uh, Acosta and Carruthers in the elevator. Uh, And they're like, yeah, we're heading up to the suite. And uh, Carruthers notices the uh, Acosta's fingers and that his fingerprints have looked like they've been chewed off. And he hears the voice in his (laughs) head. He hears the voice in his head. Oh, yeah, so-and-so chewed off his fingerprints. We couldn't be identified. 
Acosta catches on to him that he realizes who he is. He turns and pales him in like between the knuckles. Oh, that god that with this Assassin's Creed blade. Yeah, I love how he just has like Shing! these like fucking just knife in his fucking wrist, and he's just, like. Carruthers shoots him a few times. A gun drops out from across the sleeve, and they have basically a point blank shootout with each other in the inside elevator. of an elevator. And like the lights start flashing on and off. And I do got to like, say, oh my god, it's so super cool, cool how uh, they show you that Acosta is catching on that Carruthers knows who he is yeah. because he's standing in front of the elevator, and of course the elevator's got like this brass finish onto it. And so while he has a reflection, it's really blurred out. Yeah. And we get a focus cut, uh, like a, a medium shot of just that. And you can see when his head kind of tilts down that he realizes he's, you know, he's been caught. They have this shootout, and we cut, which basically shuts down all the elevators in the building. Uh, which the Trevor brothers are in the uh, an elevator as well. Uh, they've got a chainsaw and everything. It's just they're ready to go all out. They've they're dressing up in their security. Dressing out of their security clothes because they've already snuck into the hotel. Uh, we cut back to the white kid and Elmore. And this white kid's grandma, who is a registered nurse, by the way, is just as bad shit crazy as this kid is. Nobody seems to understand that this guy has been needs to go to a hospital. She lays him in this bathtub. He's missing fingers. Um, and this kid comes in while he, this guy is like shaking and shimmering in this bathtub. And like starts doing karate moves on him, and while he's doing it, he's getting an erection. <laughs> and Elmore notices that there's a bottle of Ritalin on the yeah, side of the table. This, yeah. And this kid is like inches away from punching him in the face, just being super. You think kids can be obnoxious? No kid is this oh obnoxious. Oh my god. Uh, but yeah, cut back to Jason Bateman in his hotel room, finding out that Ben Affleck and his crew has been murdered. And he makes a phone call in women's underwear, because why not? Anyway, <laughs> ignoring that, glossing over that fact, uh, we cut back to Buddy and Ivy in the bathroom. Ivy's pretty much saying, I'm not going to let you, a little punk bitch, roll, uh, roll over on me after I've had to wipe blood out of my fingernails for men uh, that you've had me kill and everything. And Buddy, toss, Buddy does this really <laughs> cool thing, because he's like trying to talk his way out of it, because he's super charismatic. He's like, you know... You only see what I want you to see, and he's he's doing a car trick in the air while he's doing it. He goes, you know, I can change anything I want into whatever I need it to be. I can make it as real as this room. Ivy's not buying it. He's heard enough. He goes to reach for his gun, and Buddy tosses a, th- a playing card and blinds him by basically cutting one of his eyes, which that's got to fucking suck, because not only does getting blinded suck, but getting a card thrown into your eye... At that fast of a speed, that's like having a knife pretty much go through your eye. It's yeah, shitty as fuck. Uh, Ivy kind of stumbles, like shoots wildly as Buddy cowers in the bathtub. Uh, the the security that's outside the suite come in, and this is all as like suit posing as Hugo is heading to the bathroom to kill both of them. Uh, but basically cowers in fear while the bodyguards come in. Ivy sees that Beanie is dead and thinks that uh, <coughs> Buddy killed him. So he tells Hugo, you get out of here. You know, Buddy's going to roll on us. And Buddy's telling him to just ignore him, but stay with me. We're almost home free. Uh, Alicia Keys finds uh, the elevator that Carruthers and Acosta are in and thinks they're both dead. And she mentions to Cookie that uh, one of them is a, f- a fed. And Cookie says, no, it's all, she's got like this police scanner. She finds out, no, only one of them's a fed. The other one is only posing as one. Cut back to the white kid and his grandma again, where. Can't get enough of them. Elmore is getting, has been bandaged up. The grandma basically gives him like this, like, I don't know what, why, I don't know how, but Elmore gets a gun. I didn't understand what was happening here. Do you want to uh, explain it? It's when, so she's showing him through, like, the box of her, like, husband, dead husband stuff. But why? That's what I didn't get. Like, just. He just picks it up and starts looking through it. She's like, oh, that's my dead husband's old stuff. Or no, son. Or dead husband? It's someone. Dead husband, I think. Yeah. And he's just like. I'm going to borrow picks this. Picks up the gun. He's like, <laughs> I'm going to borrow this. Uh, And dude, I got to say, this is all this culmination is happening. All the hitmen are pretty much at this this hotel it's just a matter of time now 
Uh, suit, because Buddy is kind of like, not only is he strung out on coke, but now he just, you know, blinded a guy. There was a shootout. He is kind of just sitting, he, you know, his bodyguard's dead. He's kind of just sitting on the steps, playing with his cards. He's a hot mess. Uh, while he's doing all of this, he's so distracted in his own <laughs> little world. Suit starts laying out like a syringe and like a medical tools. Bunch of stuff. He's prepared to kill Israel and take his heart himself. Uh, because the reason Buddy is so also so strong out is because he gets a phone call from Mecklen, who is distraught, saying the FBI revoked the deal. There is no deal. So basically, he rolled on his men for nothing. The FBI is no longer going to grant him immunity. He's they're not going to protect him. Uh, and Buddy grabs a gun and tries to commit suicide, but passes out. Uh, puts his gun in his mouth, puts his hand on the trigger, cocks it, and passes out before he can do it. Yep. And start the shooting. Uh, Holy shit. The Tremor brothers uh, arrive on one floor and uh, wipe out a bunch of FBI guards. Um, Mesner shows up to the hotel, has a shootout with Alicia Keys. And as they're getting having their shootout... Cookie across the way starts blasting away FBI agents. Like, you think getting shot sucks? Try getting shot and getting thrown 20 feet into yeah, a wall. Like, oh my. This shootout 50, is just. Fu- every- 50 cows should blow Holy your entire shit. arm off. Um, Everything goes to hell in a handbasket so quickly. Uh, as Alicia Keys is in the elevator shooting out to Messner and his crew as they're also getting blasted away from the sniper rifle. Turns out Acosta's not dead. Shoots Alicia Keys in the leg and in her side. But surprise, Carruthers, Carruthers isn't, dead, isn't either. dead either. And kills Acosta by shooting him a bunch of times. Again. Yeah. For the 1,000th time. Yeah. Uh, as th- everyone is distracted and distraught from all the gunfire, Alicia Keys manages to escape down the elevator. Cut to the Trimmer brothers who are killing FBI agents with machetes and chainsaws and like this pump... This like old school pump shotgun. Yeah. Uh, Ivy comes basically, who's being escorted out, uh, manages to get a hand on a gun, kills one of the Trimmer brothers, and the, the big one with the chainsaw. He basically shoots him so he drops the chainsaw, shoots him again so he's down on the ground, and like there's kind of, they kind of like lock eyes because they realize that if this Trimmer brother guy gets shot again, he's gonna land on top of the chainsaw and basically get his asshole ripped yeah. open. <laughs> And of course he does. That's exactly he what happens. Lands right on the chainsaw. It just blah, 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 blah. starts trembling like he's having a seizure on top of this chainsaw. God, I love this movie. But Chris Pine manages to to escape and like change wardrobes into like yeah this faux FBI. It's not even FBI. He just basically gets a hold of a badge and a suit. And is, and not escapes. even a suit, just a jacket. Yeah, a black suit jacket. Ivy escapes and man- and actually swings Alicia Keys up in his arms and runs down the stairwell. Uh, suit is taken into suit. custody. Suit. What did I say? Suit. suit. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Um, a suit is taken into custody by the guards. Um, Mesner is. Wait, r- suit isn't taken into custody. Well, he's he's held right there. He's he's held in in handcuffs, and he notices because he tries when he runs to it, like he tries to kill Buddy Israel right as the guards yeah. run in, and but, so he takes off running. Into the other room. Well, not that's not here yet. He's like what? still handcuffed there. He manages to escape in a few seconds. But oh, wait, well, you're right. Mesner is running up the the uh, the stairwell to try and get to the suite, and, and as he's running up, Ivy and Alicia Keys are running down. Uh, they have kind of a, a stalemate between themselves, but basically Alicia Keys is like, "Look, just let us go. I didn't kill Carruthers. They were like <laughs> that when I got there. You got more problems to worry about." And he does. Mesner lets him go. Uh, but yeah, Mesner arrives to the top. Suit manages to escape by running into. He escapes out of his handcuffs, runs into the bathroom, uh, ditches his like face, fake Hugo face, his and clothes, his jacket, and everything within like four seconds. Yeah, manages to disrobe, and he basically they think he's the butler because he's pointing. He's like, they, he went that way, he went that way, mm-hmm. and walks out. Pretty much, just walks straight the fuck out of this room. Uh. So yeah, Suits escaped, Chris Pines escaped, Alicia Keys and Ivy have escaped. Um, Acosta's body is being wheeled out on a a gurney as his Assassin's Creed blade thing kind of like retracts. So So you're like, ah, fuck, uh, this guy's still alive. He's probably still alive. Uh, Cookie, who has been flirting with Alicia Keys this whole time, uh, and Alicia Keys isn't feeling it, uh, she 
you know, loses her shit, which is why she starts blasting away these FBI agents because she believes Alicia Keys is dead and she's a hundred percent in love with her. But she looks down and realizes that she sees a man. How dare he carrying Alicia Keys out of the building? It's just not fair. Super distraught, but she basically sees this right as the FBI in her hotel room. And I, I'm not sure she gets arrested here. I thought she did, but there's like a gun sound effect right as it transitions away. So I'm not sure if they shot her uh, or not. But oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Chris Pine is escaping and uh, walking to the parking lot to his garage where uh, <coughs> Elmore notices, and says, hey, man, is that your car? And Chris Pine's like, nope. <laughs> and he throws up his FBI badge. He's like, I'm confiscating it. And he's like, I'm FBI. And everybody goes, oh, you're FBI. All right. And he pulls a gun on him. He mentions the Lake Tahoe thing. He goes, all right. Chris Pine's like, all right, all right. You caught me. I'm sorry. And they have kind of a conversation, a very simple conversation. Like He's like, look, man, I'm sorry I had to do that to you, but it's just the way of the business, you know, and it's always going to be that way. So Elmore's like, look, I'm going to need the keys to your car. And he's like, all right, that's fair enough. So Chris Pine puts the key ring on his last good finger of his left hand. Like, around his pointing finger. And he's like, sorry, man. Yeah. He walks off. Elmore looks at the keys. And he's like, man, fuck this. And just, and just unloads the clip no, on. No, no, no. <laughs> he doesn't even turn around. He literally just stares at the keys in his hand, points the gun backwards, and just pop, 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 pop. Chris Nails Pine. Chris Pine. Yeah, just drops. <laughs> so uh, we cut to, basically, Andy Garcia and crew have shown up to... Uh, and pretty much taking control of the of whole the suite. situation. They're like, look, uh, you're, tells Mesner you're to report back to Washington, D.C. Uh, you'll be debriefed there, but we'll have no more discussion of what happened here today. Mesner's like, fuck that. Not only did I have a bunch of people just get shot, I got mm-hmm. you know, blast, almost blasted away by 50 cal. Carruthers is dead, and you're not telling me anything? He's like, look, you just go back to D.C. We'll, I'll debrief you there. So... Cut to later that night, Mesner goes to a nearby hospital where presumably Buddy Israel is being kept. Mm -hmm. Um, And he takes Andy Garcia hostage. The director of the FBI points a gun at him and says, look, you're going to tell me exactly what the fuck happened here. Um, And Andy Garcia leads him into uh, this this hospital room. Where where, you see Speraza and mm -hmm. Israel in bed. Each in a hospital bed in the same room. Hooked up to these machines and EKGs and stuff. And Mesner's confused. He's like, look, m- make this make sense to me. Turns out Sparazza and Buddy Israel are father, father and son. And son. Uh, the Swede that everyone keeps mentioning wasn't a hitman. He was the head of cardiology at this university. who's yeah. basically like the best in the business at doing heart transplants. Sparazza wanted Buddy Israel's heart because he's dying and they're blood compatible. So he wants Israel's heart. His son's heart, which is super fucked up when you think about it. Yeah. Uh, and then you get the whole... You find out the contents of that folder from earlier. Mm-hmm. Detail. Well, let me let me, let me me tell one more thing first. Okay. Uh, turns out Suit was not a hitman uh, hired for this job. He was... Or who wanted the bounty on, on this job. He was just hired to kill Buddy's entourage. Get yeah, him out of the to way. to clear them out of the way, pretty much. Yeah. Turns out this folder that Garcia was delivered <clears throat> details what exactly happened with Freeman Heller, who was the undercover double op, and Sprott. So it turns out Freeman this is, Heller went undercover, changed. This is mind blowing. This yeah, it changed his whole thing. Like they can, they kind of reshow the scene where he's like, you know, I'm gonna get plastic surgery to change my jaw, change my nose, pull my ears back. My name will be Primo, Primo Sparaza, and you're just like. So I think it's super confusing at first because you're let you're basically told okay Sparazza <coughs> is actually Freeman Heller in disguise yeah. and everyone's kind of like what? Um, turns out that Sparazza got into a uh, Freeman Heller became Primo Sparazza got into the Sparazza fam- mafioso. Uh, somebody, I guess, uh, th- found out that he was an FBI agent tried to kill him, but. It didn't kill him, and I guess it kind of altered his his mind state to where uh, the FBI burned him because they thought he had gone rogue because he was so deep undercover, and after he got shot, he started acting exactly like a mafioso, pretty much. Uh, so the FBI is the one who actually killed Heller, and, uh, or tried to kill Heller, not Sprott's trying to kill Heller, because again, they thought he had went rogue. So he survived, he assumed his fake identity, 
and basically had all these surgeries that weren't elective. They were actually to like to keep to, him alive. Yeah, to and fix him after the, the quote unquote, him. the quote unquote paternity uh, charge or whatever that uh, Sprott had against him was for Buddy Israel. Yeah, and Mesner is pissed oh, <laughs> because he, I mean, can you fucking blame him? No, so basically, I would be goddamn furious. What's happening here? Is the FBI had this whole thing orchestrated to save a former FBI agent who has essentially uh, double crossed him? Because yeah. even if he doesn't, he's not in the right mind state. He's basically gone rogue and become yeah. a mafioso. So and instead of them getting Buddy Israel as an informant, they're gonna say "fuck Buddy Israel," save Sparaza, and bring him back to our side. Not so much bring him back to our side, but pretty much force him to tell us yeah. everything. Yeah, give us all the details. Pretty much use him as an informer. So they rolled on Israel. They're like, fuck that. Give, kill Buddy Israel. Take his heart. Give it to Sparazza. We'll bring him in. We'll bring him down the whole thing. So Mesner's like, fuck that. We just, you, you, we basically went through all this shit to save this mafioso leader. Whether he was an FBI agent at one point or not, you know, we would. Like, he's not that anymore. Yeah, Carruthers. And a bunch of other men died today for that. And he is, and Garcia's like, look, I'll excuse your outburst because of the sensitive nature of what's going on here, but you're you're going to go back to D.C. You're never going to mention this again. You'll be debriefed. If you want to resign, I'll take your resignation right here. And he says, I'll give you a few moments to collect your thoughts and walks out. Big mistake. Yep. <laughs> because Messner kind of sits down in between the two seats. He's kind of reflecting on what's happening. And, uh... He just reaches back and unplugs. I love that fucking shot. Oh my god! <laughs> unplugs both of their machines. They're just like the plug. Like their life support is plugged in, one over this shoulder, one over this shoulder, and he just both just hands casually up, just reaches back, pulls them both, and yeah, you see. This is a very unsettling scene to me. Where like you everyone's see, bashing on the door. No, no, not even in, that. Or... Just as they get unplugged, you obviously hear the the EKG flatline. Oh, yeah. You see Jeremy Piven. Kind of like his body starts yeah. seizuring as he's dying, which I, I can't watch Jeremy Pivot die. It makes me sad. But it's a rough one. <laughs> yeah, so Mesner pulls the plug on both of them, takes his gun and his badge, uncocks the gun, places it on the floor. But the room is locked from the inside. And so Garcia and the Swede and a bunch of their men hear what's going on, run up to the door, try to burst it open, bang on the door, tell him to open the door. And Messner's like, just stares at him. And that's it. That's the end. That's the end of the movie, which I got to say, it ends with a super awesome song that's almost like a remix of the, the theme from Requiem for a Dream. Yeah, kind of. It's got of. a very, very similar theme. To, and I love the soundtrack to this movie, dude. I can't find it anywhere to buy, but I fucking love the sound. That song is awesome. So, yeah, that's the end of the movie, dude. Mesner says, fuck this. Like, he is in... Apparently, he's like a really young FBI agent, too, but he's like, fuck this. I'm... D- no, oh, yeah. No, not doing this. So I've only got a few things like that. That ending the is super badass. So much fun, but that ending hits so fucking hard. Cause you're like, damn, dude, like this is reality. A lot yeah. of people died today. So I've only got a few things I want to talk about before we get to our silver lining. Okay. Which I gotta say, I'm glad you picked this one because we've had some really rough ones recently and really difficult ones to find a silver lining to. This one, not so this much. One, no, this one was actually pretty easy on us. And it's a fun watch. Oh, so, God, I mean, oh my God. I, uh, I watched this twice. Joe Carnahan needed to fill the role of the neo-Nazi speed freak Tremor Brothers because he originally had Michael Shannon. <laughs> because, he, of course. Because, of course. When you would. write that role, you're like, and Michael Shannon. So, but apparently he fired Michael Shannon because he was rude to a costume designer, which, whatever. I have whatever that's you know that's could be rumor. Didn't cunt put him and within 10 seconds of auditioning chris pine he was like yep you're good you're doing it <laughs> so i can't imagine what that audition was like uh it's the feature hilarious. debut the feature film debut of both alicia keys and common both of them really did really well yeah and, oh, is this alicia, dude, i love common is this alicia this keys only movie no maybe i don't know uh, Terrence Malick said that this was a very well directed film and is one of his favorites of all time. <laughs> what? That's insane that Terrence Malick would say that. Wait. Yeah. What? Terrence Malick of all people said that. That's like Kubrick saying, "Yeah, man, I fucking love Hot Fuzz." <laughs> <What>? <laughs> um, that's that's 
that's a real thing that happened, huh? Yeah. Last thing I want to mention, because uh, I thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, only one female character is killed throughout the entire movie, and that's the prostitute. The prostitute that is accidentally shot in the face by Alicia Keys' character. Uh, which is kind of ironic because, again, she had said earlier in the film she didn't want yeah. to kill any women. Um, and according to this trivia note, which, again, this is, in, <coughs> this is IMDb, so take this with a grain of salt, the only other female character that gets killed is her partner by the feds. But I don't even know if she technically gets killed. She's You think dead. so? Yeah. Okay. She unleashed that fucking 50 cal into the room that, yeah, no, she's dead as fuck. All right. All right, Molly, if you don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and throw my silver lining out here. What um, you got? I, I think it's pretty straight up obvious. I mean, let's, let's do a tally, okay? Acosta, question mark, right? I mean, yeah. dead, alive, I'm presumably more alive than dead. Out of the game for a while. At least out of the game for a while. Suit escapes. Suit, suit, sorry. Suit, suit, suit escaped. It's like, did you even watch the movie? <laughs> escaped. Uh, Cookie, dead. We'll say dead. Yeah, dead as fuck. Shermer Brothers, all dead. Uh, who else we got? Is that it? Uh, yeah. Pretty much all the bad guys, including Buddy's crew, all except for Ivy, are fucking dead. So that's a good thing, right? You get rid of the waste. Buddy, dead. Sprouts are dead. Can't beat that, man. And, of course, by that ending scene, Ryan Reynolds at least gets some retribution for the death of his partner and all the innocent lives that were lost. <laughs> okay. Pretty easy, straightforward okay. kind of a silver lining. What you got? Mine. Come and go and get that booty. <laughs> okay. Sure. Simple. Yeah. Simple. Elegant. Not only that booty, he's getting Alicia Keys. Yeah. <sighs> Oh, okay. I want to do something real quick. Uh, my buddy Hauser, who also does a podcast, you can check it out on YouTube. It's a video podcast called The Film Scouts Podcast. Um, he loves this movie. Good. And when he heard we were doing it, he mentioned he wanted to give his input. Um, oh, please. So I'm going to try and call him. I haven't kind of foretold him that I was going to call. Uh, so we might this might not work. But while I'm doing this, do you want to tell me... I mean, this movie is fun, and yeah. it's pretty. It's pretty like not downer until you get to that ending. Yeah, yeah. Which that ending might leave you with a fuck kind of thing, feeling. Oh no, so, for sure. You want to tell me while I'm trying to get him on the phone? Do you want to tell him, uh, tell us uh, what your pick me up movie alternative is? What's a movie you can watch my, after Smoking Aces? Okay, my pick me up. I'm going. It's another Ryan Reynolds film. Bit of an ensemble cast, if you will. Mm-hmm. Waiting. Oh, that's I think that's the first Ron Reynolds movie I saw. Uh yeah, probably. That I can think of. Let's see if we can get Hauser on the phone. Oh I'm so excited. I love waiting though. Oh, the movie. I thought you meant like waiting on someone to answer the phone. <laughs> I think that's weird. Please leave your oh. message. Oh, Hauser, you of failed a me. Bitch. You told me you wanted to be on the episode. Well, you lost your chance. <laughs> Uh, my pick me up. We're doing a part two. <laughs> my pick me up. Uh, I think it's similar in vain. It's a little bit of an ensemble. I think. Okay. Also super funny. Also starring Ryan Reynolds. Oh. Going with the instant classic. One of the best pictures of this year, 2016. You gotta go with Deadpool, man. Oh, excellent choice. I mean, excellent. You, you can see Ryan. Reynolds. Another movie. De- Ryan Reynolds just picks like. Is the script quotable? Cool, I'll do it. Yeah, pretty much. And while you get to see him a little more of his action serious kind of stuff in this one, you get all fun in that one, man. Super fun. Dude, you movie. get some dramatic acting from him in Deadpool. You do Pool actually too. get a little bit like, of dramatic acting, yeah. He killed it in Deadpool. I gotta say, Ryan Reynolds comes up a lot on this podcast. Ye- Holy shit. <laughs> like, why? Why does Ryan Reynolds continuously come up on this podcast? Anyway. I don't know, but I like it. That is... Smoking Aces from 2006. If you enjoy listening to our show, please subscribe on iTunes since you're already there listening to it. Please like us on Facebook, <coughs> facebook.com slash Silver Linings Playlist. You can even drop us a suggestion for a movie you'd like us to talk about and find the Silver Lining to. Um, I should you- mention, I think this is probably the last episode of the year. Uh, we're going to go on our Christmas break. Uh, go back home, see our families. I'm gonna go freeze to death. I just, you, I just graduated, so I want to go find a job. Do you know how? <laughs> uh, you know what the temperature in Chicago was today? A good one. Because I hate Florida weather. One. I'm down for that. It was one degree. I would, I would love that. One. Yeah. <laughs> I can do that. 
Find me a job up in Chicago. How about that? I would love to live there. It was one. I'm okay with Don't that. Don't know. Okay, I hate Florida weather. It's like 76 outside right now, and I want to die. It's like 76 outside and like 90 inside. <laughs> yeah, well, whatever. Uh, that guy in Beverly Air conditioning is hot. expensive. Um, but yeah. one, that's too cold. Because keep in yeah. mind, with wind chill, it's negative 12 uh, right That's now. a good point. I didn't think about the wind chill. Yeah. All right. Anyways, uh, but yeah, this is Check probably ass. this is probably the last episode of the year. So thank you everybody for tuning in to our little show. We will be back at the beginning of the year, and when we come back, clue for next episode. I'm not gonna lie, we're starting off the new year <laughs> strong. <laughs> okay, we if, are. If that's what you want to call it, I guess. Out strong. Mm, okay. What do you want to give me? A Heavy hitter. Clue? For a 2017. Clue, a clue for the first episode of 2017. What you got? All right, this is not only a clue for our first episode of 2017, it's also just good advice in life. Mm -hmm. Also, like, directly related to the plot. <laughs> that as well. Yeah. <laughs> Avoid women named after flowers. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. 2017 is going to be a good year. It's gonna be, we're going to start it off. We're bad shit crazy. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> so, thank you everyone for listening this year. Please tune in next year. Uh, and again, like us oh on my Facebook. God, we can say that because it will. Oh my God. Yeah, dude. Subscribe on iTunes. All that good stuff. <laughs> we will be back. Thank you for listening. And to leave you with the last one of the year, as always, Excelsior. Excelsior.